She's implicated in at least six felony cases in Bear County, but has never been prosecuted. Audrey Avila has left a trail of people in their in her wake who say the sheriff's office failed to take their allegations seriously, despite a mountain of evidence. No follow up. No, uh, there was no action taken. Common sense, man. Put two and two together. Get to work. You know. Tonight, the night team's Dylan Collier breaks down how the charges collapsed in this defender's report. Comal County seems like the most appropriate place to begin our story because it's the only county that has actually prosecuted Audrey Avila for forgery. In April 2017, Avila walked into this bank on Bulverde Road and tried to cash a $700 check through her grandfather's account. This would prove to be problematic for Avila for several reasons. Her grandpa's signature did not match what the bank had on file, and the address of the woman who supposedly wrote the check turned out to be this vacant lot down the road. Avila was eventually charged with forgery and in September 2018 pleaded guilty, avoiding a two-year prison sentence by agreeing to serve five years probation. By then, public records show she was already squatting on these two lots in far north Bear County, claiming them as her actual address. The wire was running right through here. The ruse would last well into last fall when Avila finally met her match, real estate investor Mark Anthony Ortega. They had this place all fenced up and they had it no trespassing. They put up uh, red, uh, purple spray paint on the trees and the fence posts out here. Ortega was attempting to buy the land from its real owner, the son of a West Texas couple who died years earlier when he learned that Avila had submitted a fake deed to the Bear County Clerk's Office that included the recent notarized signatures of the long deceased couple. Avila was also able to get her name onto the property's county appraisal records. When Ortega tried to pass along this evidence to Bear County Sheriff's deputies. Everybody was very nonchalant, more of just, you know, oh, it's more, they just wanted to get the eviction completed and not, nothing further from that. Ortega is not the only person, not even the only real estate investor to have problems with Avila and this land on Pine Eagle Lane. Avila was evicted from the property, but not before contacting a man named Yoander V. Money and offering to sell him both plots of land for less than $30,000. And she, yeah, she gave a good deal, basically it was uh, half off. Looking back now, V Money says the rush tone of Avila's voice should have been a red flag. I'll, I'll let you have it for 28,000. But you need to close by next week. Avila got her wish, but just days after V Money handed over a cashier's check, he too learned she wasn't the actual owner of the property. My own greed got in the way. You know, I thought I had a slam dunk deal. Records show Avila attempted to deposit the check into a relative's bank account. A temporary restraining order filed by V Money has so far kept that transaction from going through. Like Ortega, V Money went to law enforcement and like Ortega, he was surprised by the reaction of sheriff's investigators. Hey, this isn't good. This doesn't prove anything. And there's more. Court filings show Avila has faced four felony charges in Bear County since the summer of 2017. Avila booked for drug possession and forgery that July after a deputy who pulled her over found meth, pills, and checks that according to the arrest report, Avila admitted were probably stolen. Two months later, Avila was again busted by BCSO, this time while in possession of eight credit cards belonging to other people and checks that had been altered to change the last name and the dollar amount. Avila charged with fraudulent use of IDs and again, forgery. But district clerk records confirm one by one each of the cases was dismissed in 2018 after the law enforcement agency failed to submit the necessary evidence. Ortega is disappointed, but based on what he's seen, not surprised. To know that a crime was committed and to basically be told that they weren't going to do anything. Right, about it. it's upsetting. I mean, for, um, for smaller crimes, it seems like there's a bigger action, but something this large, nobody wanted to do anything. For the defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Avila's whereabouts are currently not known. Address after address linked to her through public records turned out to be vacant, partially developed, or non-existent properties. The defenders confirmed she was also named in a credit card fraud case in December, but has never been charged. BCSO officials declined to make Sheriff Javier Salazar available for an interview for this story, but did say they are still investigating the Pine Eagle fake deed case. They have also asked the district attorney's office for clarification on why the four previous cases against her were tossed out. 
If you have encountered her, we want to hear from you. You can email us at defenders at or call 210-351-1212.